Hello my fellow adventurers, it's Ryan here from D&D Awakening. Today we are continuing our epic adventure into the world of Dungeons and Dragons with episode 4, A Whisper in the Night. And if you enjoyed today's edition, why not hit that like button as it really helps us out here at D&D Awakening. So, on to the story. After the savage fight the party had fought on the road, heading away from the town of No Name, with the bandits upon the Lord's Road, it was already getting late. The party wanted to set up camp before it was dark. They strolled on for a time after the fight, Melkor and Bjorn assisting the wounded Dane. The only thing he needed was to rest and allow his wounds to heal. Alegna had used her healing skills. Everyone else within the company was now fit and well. Even Henrik, who had received a blow from a party member during the attack. If this continued, he determined he might have to seek another team to adventure with. But his devotion to those around him growing daily, notably for his fellow barbarians who had become like brothers to him. But it was merely a matter of time before a stray arrow would stop him or an axe would take a limb. Then again, he thought to himself, these miscreants were the only family he now had. Soon, after they stumbled off the road to set up camp, confident they were far enough away from where the fight had taken place, but far enough off the road not to be caught, they moved into a clearing in the woods. In the clearing was a former camp. In the centre was a fire pit that hadn't been lit in days, and around the edge of the fire stood four tents of equal size, each large enough to sleep three to four large men. As the barbarians searched the camp to see if the previous occupants were still around, Helman lit a fire with an incantation. Alegna looked after the weary Dane while Riv sat playing with a mouse known as Cheese. Just into the wooden area, the barbarians had found two tables. Both had carcasses laid upon them. They appeared abandoned, halfway through cutting. But other than that, the tents lay empty. Not even a bedroll left behind. Dane left to rest his wounds. Deciding to take the most northern tent as his own, Alegna and Riv laid him down gently before returning to the fire to join the others and enjoy the meal Helman had produced from his backpack. As the party worked their way through the warm sausages, Alegna felt inquisitive and wanted to know more about those she now travelled with. Ah, my fellow companions, hee <laughs> hee, Alegna said, as we search for these missing barbarians. Do you not worry about your own families back home? She aimed this at the barbarians within the group, rather than at Rave or Hellman. Those you see around you are the only family I have left, Melkor replied. I returned from the barbarian wars to nothing but death and emptiness. My tribe wiped out, including my wife and Brina, and my child. He said, as a single tear caressed his cheek, there is nothing left in this world for me. So, if I can find some of my brother's barbarians, or at least what is taking them, then I might find some solace before I pass into the next life. Sorry, said Alegna. You didn't kill them, replied Melkor. You do not have to be sorry, and I will join them soon enough. A barbarian's life is full of death and loss. We understand this, but it doesn't mean we forget those that left this world before us. Most of my brothers are dead too, joined in Henrik. Most fell during the Barbarian Wars. My actual family is still alive. My tribe itself is far from these lands. I have no reason to worry about them, he said with a smile. Plus, I don't like most of the bastards anyway. He laughed, as did the others, even Bjorn. They cast me out, only after I witnessed my mother being torn limb from limb from the Orc Elders, Bjorn frowned. I have been alone most of my life, and I have no family. One day, I will take revenge upon those orcs who killed my mother. I will make them pay. I will join you in this, for orcs have no love in my heart, bellowed Melkor. With a glint in his eye and a chirp in his usual gruff voice, Henrik joined in. And me! I love nothing more than killing orcs! Full orcs, that is Bjorn. Half orcs are fine, he said with a grin. Ha <laughs> ha! I'd like to see you try, you scrawny runt! Bjorn laughed, as did the rest of the party, including Henrik, who couldn't help but smile at his barbarian brethren. What about you then, Legna? asked Helman. Why are you out here with us? They burned my village and all those within to the ground when I was very young, she replied, more sombre than usual. Those who did this took me, but I was young, and when I had my strength back, I escaped. I've wandered these lands ever since, leading a joyful life. Doing what I want, when I want, while doing who I want, when I want, she laughed. 
As the group roared with laughter, Henrik stood up and asked, Ah, you so you like a bit of a good time then, hey? Well, there's no better time than being with a barbarian, he said laughing. And if I ever want to experience that, I'll sleep with the half-orc or the dwarf before you, Alegna retorted. They all howled with laughter, including Henrik, both Melkor and Bjorn slapping him on the back. It was then they heard it, something rustling in the night. What was that? asked Riv. A fear in her voice you wouldn't expect. I'm not sure, Alegna replied as she withdrew her bow and knocked an arrow onto the string in one swift move. Simultaneously, the barbarians drew their weapons and riv her daggers, which she held tight, ready to strike. It came from the south, Melkor announced. Bjorn, Henrik, with me. Next time, we set a watch. With that, Alegna moved between two of the tents into the dark before heading into the woods. Her dark vision allowed her to approach the south undetected while using her skills as a wood elf to move swiftly through the forest. The rest of the party moved to the south of the camp, the three barbarians leading the way, followed by Riv alongside Hellman, who had lit a torch to assist his vision. They again heard a rustle in the trees, but couldn't see anything through the dark as they advanced. Within moments, they had lost sight of Alegna as they passed between the other two tents and approached where one carcass had been, though now, it had gone. It was then Henrik threw the spear he had had upon his back into the woods, hitting nothing. All you could hear was it striking the ground. What? Henrik said as both Melkor and Bjorn just looked at him. Without a word, Riv couldn't hold in her excitement anymore and leapt upon the back of Bjorn so she could get a better view. Helmund did the same and climbed onto the back of Henrik. What kind of circus is this? Melkor grunted. I've seen it all now. Here we are approaching a noise in the middle of the night in the depths of the woods and you four think it's a great idea to plan your roles of joining the travelling circus. Whatever it is, it's not coming out, Melkor said. But I have a plan. They set a trap in less than two minutes. The party sat Riv in the firelight eating marshmallows she had found and wanted to roast on the fire using her as bait to lure out whatever was lurking within the dark. With Riv in place, Alegna stayed hidden within the woods. The three barbarians took a tent each, the ones closest to Riv, while Helmund was taking the farthest tent from the fire. Helmund, now hungry and trying to go unnoticed, used Mage Hand and conjured a marshmallow to fly to him as he waited to see what would happen next. As Riv started munching and singing, it didn't take long before there was a motion to the south of the camp behind the tent in which Melkor waited. Not wanting to scare off whatever it was, Melkor remained silent. In moments, the noise was walking between both his tent and that of Bjorn's. It reached the light. They saw a giant black bear walking straight at Riv. With a roar and laughter, the three barbarians charged, weapons raised, ready to strike. What they were not expecting was Riv, the smallest barbarian in the group, to withdraw both her daggers from her belt and shouting the words RAGE before jumping at the bear. Within seconds, the three barbarians joined Riv, Melkor's axe hitting first as he was the closest, the blade biting deep into the black bear's hide. As it reared back, Riv fell off. In a day, she jumped back to her feet and swung her daggers at the rear of the creature. Her first strike missed, but the second striking home. She shouted in glee, looking up at the monster she had impaled, realising she had struck the backside of Henrik in error. Will everyone refrain from hitting me and instead hit those we are fighting? Henrik roared. He swung his axe, hitting the black bear deep in the side, just as Bjorn's blade swung down, missing by a whisker. It was inevitable the bear would go down. No one expected it would be the magic missiles of Hellman, who while still eating the marshmallows within his tent, would be the one to make the final blow. Three magical arrows threw past everyone and hit the beast in the chest. All three simultaneously. The bear gave one last roar as it fell forward, motionless to the ground. The adventurers just stood there looking at the bear and laughed. Well, that was an easy fight for a change, Henrik said. Well, apart from you stabbing me in the backside, Riv. Riv looked away as she apologised, grinning as she did. For that, I will have this bear's head and hide as compensation for the injuries you all seem to want to inflict upon me, he said, swinging his axe down and separating the black bear's head from its body with one strike. That bear was well groomed for a wild animal, said Bjorn. It was then they heard the hooting of an owl from the east, a warning signal from a legner of approaching danger. What have you done to my pet? roared a voice from the south. A giant creature stepped into the light. You will pay for this. 
with your lives. It was then the seven foot bugbear charged at our adventurers, mace in hand. All the while they could hear more screams approaching from the darkness. The party knew they were in trouble. They were surrounded. Quick, kill the beast, shouted Bjorn before charging at the monster which had now entered the light. As he approached, the bugbear's mace smashed into Bjorn, knocking him to the side but causing no damage. The beast continued to move forward, as did his mace, striking Riv in the chest sending her flying over the flames of the fire to land winded on the far side. Here she heard noises approaching from behind. Alegna had seen everything from her vantage point within the woods, and before Rivers landed, or should I say crashed into the floor, she cast Healing Word upon her. With that, the party was fighting for their lives. Melkor, Bjorn and Henrik were now in combat with the bugbear, just as two orcs passed by Alegna from the west, not seeing her as they were focused on the fight. Two hobgoblins came from the south, and two more approached from the north. A trap was trapping the trappers. The barbarians knew they had to be quick because if they didn't, they'd soon be surrounded while fighting the bugbear, leading to their swift demise. Melkor swung his axe low and hard, hitting the creature across his leg, severing a tendon. Bjorn's blade law killer turned down, catching the bugbear in the shoulder. But instead of cutting through its hide, it just got stuck. As he tried to remove the blade, the bugbear lashed out in anger. He fell backwards, his sword coming free as he fell, rising to return to the fight. However, he sensed another blade heading for his back. He turned to parry the orc's blow. Just in time, he avoided the strike. The fight was on. The approaching creatures released several arrows at our adventurers. The first striking Melkor a glancing blow. The rest all missed, apart from one that hit Bjorn's thigh where it stuck. Bjorn though paying no notice as he was now in a rage. Henrik and Melkor continued to strike blows upon the bugbear, striking and moving within a circle. Before long, the creature was bleeding from a dozen wounds, but still not dead. Fighting back with increased fury, until, as before, out of the darkness, came three magic missiles from where Helmund was still standing. The first striking the creature in the chest, followed by two in the back, killing him, his body falling into the fire. With the bugbear now dead, it only left our six adventurers against six foes. Riv was rising to her feet after Elegna had healed her. Dazed and confused, she was now in a rage, a barbarian at heart. She had seen a creature that later turned out to be a hobgoblin approach from the northwest. With a roar and in a day, she no longer cared for her safety and charged straight at the hobgoblin. With one swift move, she was flying. Daggers raised, one caught the hobgoblin in the chest. The second in the throat, the hobgoblin fell to the floor, the full force of a flying gnome hitting it. Within seconds, the hobgoblin lay pierced in the chest eight more times, dead. Riv spat in the foe's blood as she cackled. Bjorn continued to fight the orc in front of him. Melkor charged the nearest hobgoblin not in a fight, and Henrik charged the orc closest to himself while Helmund readied his fireball. Alagna used Moonbeam from the dark upon the closest orc followed by an arrow from a bow. In retaliation, the orc saw Alegna, firing an arrow straight at her. It caught her in the side, knocking her down from the tree she sat upon, taking the wind from her. But her revenge was swift, the death of the orc falling to the moonbeam spell she had just cast. With the fight going the way of our stalwart adventurers, it was then they brought this deadly fight to a conclusion, as swiftly as possible. Melkor continued to strike and parry the whole goblin he fought, both seemingly unable to hit the other. Melkor swings not as quick as they had been in his younger years. The whole goblin could not break through the defence of the fierce dwarf. Bjorn though had no such problems. He swung Law Killer in one mighty arc, cleaving the hobgoblin in two at the waist. One last howl of pain as the creature hit the ground in two halves, motionless. By now, Riv, the new barbarian of the group, had regained her feet and was charging the lone hobgoblin, still not in combat, dodging not one, but two arrows. She arrived at the creature just in time to see it incinerated by a well-aimed fireball that Hailman had sent flying from the comfort of his tent once again. This just left two, the York, who was now approaching Elegna, and the Hobgoblin fighting with Melkor. As the Orc approached the winded Elegna, the last thing he saw was the dainty little elf in front of him change shape into a black bear, before its giant teeth and claws shredded him from limb to limb. With this, the last Hobgoblin tried to flee, knowing the fight was over. 
but as he turned to run, he felt a sword pierce him through the chest as Bjorn had joined the fight. Gurgling his last words, he slid forward off the blade to his knees, before him face first. We've got to stop killing everyone we meet, Hellman joked. Why? replied Bjorn. We seem to be pretty good at it. Alegna, who again resembled herself, was seeing to the wounds of the party. Maybe we ask questions first before we kill everyone? I think we just took over this camp and then killed the owners after returning, she said to the group. Yes, that's what appears to have happened, said Melkor. It does, however, seem I'm getting too old for this. But I'm a barbarian too, and aren't we supposed to kill everything, said Riv. Laughing along with the party, Henrik responded, We kill when we have to, Riv, and sometimes when we want to. But I agree, we don't have to kill everyone we see. But it does make things more fun, he laughed. What now then? asked the Legner. We check the bodies, then we see what the hell Dane is doing, replied Bjorn. The three barbarians moved all the bodies to the fire, casting them into the flames to join the bugbear, who was always sending smoke signals into the night with the smell of burning flesh. What is that smell? asked Dane as he approached from the tent he had been resting in. Is breakfast ready? The group just looked at him and laughed before recounting the story of what had happened while he rested from his wounds. So guys, what do you think of episode 4? A whisper in the night. Why don't you comment below and let us know. And if you've enjoyed the story so far, why not give us a massive thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Take care guys and we will see you in the next episode.